if it is totally contracted if and suppose if it just was not found we could also suspect for abruptio placenta okay that's what i want to ask you so tell us and the other students who are listening from all over the country how to differentiate from history and examination uh, a difference between placenta previa and abruptio placenta i mean you are saying placenta previa suppose you didn't have the ultrasound finding in this case patient mm -hmm. came to us for the first time at 30 plus 4 weeks of gestation she had just come and these are the finding but we don't have any ultrasound finding for her so then can you still make the diagnosis of placenta previa or could then you can mention that we'll do ultrasound to confirm the diagnosis so from the history and examination also things are in favor of placenta previa what are those the patient had a com a complaint of a painless bleeding. The main mm -hmm. factor that we differentiate abruptio placenta from placenta previa in symptoms is abruptio placenta has severe pain and abdomen with bleeding per vagina. Uh, and however, bleeding may or may not be there in abruptio placenta. It can also be a, a concealed abruptio or a revealed abruptio. If a concealed abruptio is there, the on examination, the uterine size, the fundal size will be more than the period of gestation. But however, in this case, the fundal size was equal to the period of gestation. Per abdomen was also, uterus was relaxed. In abruptio placenta, the uterus will be tonically contracted. Hmm. So you can do, you can divide them into you no know, history, uh, on history, hmm. then on a clinical examination like that. You no, know, general examination, then abdominal examination like that. So from as you already said, but you can make it more like, you know, there is a table given in most books, including in my books, almost 10 to 12 points are there, differences between them. And there's sometimes in exam, they may ask you also in practical as well as in theory also, differences in placenta previa and abruptio placenta. There is a table actually, about 12 points are there. So um, that will make you your presentation much better and especially in theory exam also. So from mm -hmm. history taking itself, you can say, you know, like the madam has also written that, you know, painless bleeding, painless mm -hmm. bleeding goes in fear of placenta previa, painful in that. So this was a painless bleeding. And then apparently causeless, you know, patient was just uh, like resting at that time and, you know, when it happened. Uh, so again, in uh, placenta previa. And then any history of, uh, uh, there is no history of hypertension. So that goes in fear of placenta previa. If there was a history of hypertension, that goes in hypertension preeclampsia, that goes in fear of abruptio placenta. So, I mean, from the history taking and then previous past history of placenta previa, APH also goes in favor of placenta previa. So, you know, there are three, four points in, in, in from history taking. And then on examination, you can say her general condition is well maintained and uh, mm -hmm. like, you know, her blood, blood pressure is normal. So that also goes in favor of placenta previa. In case of abruption, sometimes the general condition is worse than expected. <laughs>